Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be looking at a industrial walking foot sewing machine. It's the Conso 206RB-2. This, this machine does have a reverse lever on it here. And what I want to be looking at today is right over here on this side we have the upper tension assembly. If you know these machines, you might be able to tell. I think somebody took this assembly off and they put this thread guide behind the assembly. So we're gonna just take this all off and uh, just check it over, clean it up, and then put it back on and get it working properly. As you can see, when I lift the presser foot, the thread pulls through easily, but when I put it back down, it should tighten up. It's still pulling through quite easily. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I'll just go ahead and get the threads out of the way. And it's just going to be, I'll take this off first. There's a thumb screw right here that needs to come off. Just twist that off. Counterclockwise, of course and then this screw will need to come out of the casting. So it comes off pretty simply. But I'm going to break this down all the way because it's going to have to be cleaned anyway. There's that screw. This is the thread guide. That should have been on the outside here so that this would sit in here properly. And then you can just pull this straight off and I'll show you how this works. The take up spring is right here and that has a small notch in it. You should be able to see it there. And that goes into a little groove in the, this post that comes out of the machine. The next thing I'm going to want to do is take this all apart just so I can clean it. Here you can see the assembly when it's removed from the machine. There's a little lever in the back here with two screws. Now these are not supposed to be tight. This uh, has to be able to move freely back and forth because there's a pin that comes through the casting of the machine that's going to push on this little finger right here. And as that pushes, it drives another small pin inside this shaft to loosen up. Let's see if I can get it here. To loosen these tension discs. So I'm going to go ahead and there's another thumb screw. You can see it right there. That should work this way. Turn it counterclockwise. You can take this thumb screw off. And there's going to be the spring, this black disc here has a little area in it that catches the uh, pin that comes through here. And then we've got these two tension discs. Then there's another pin inside here that drives this. If you take this off, be careful when you get to this point because you turn it like this and that pin is going to just fall right out. And then I'll go ahead and there's one screw here. I can remove this. This screw is just to set the angle of your take up spring if you want it to pull a little harder on your thread or not quite as hard when it's bringing that bottom thread up when it makes a stitch. So this is basically the whole part broken down. Here's the part that goes on your, the biggest part that goes on your machine here. And I'm just going to clean these off and then I'll show you how to put this back together. They're not too bad. This, this is a little rough right here. I don't know. Somebody might have hit it with something. So I'm going to just file this down a little bit and just polish this off. I've got all my parts cleaned up. As you can see here, this little pin that comes through this assembly did have a little bit of a burr on it right here on this edge. And if you don't have a file, you can go and get a little nail file. And just right on the ridge here, there's a little ridge here from this being pushed up and down so many times. And you can just work that and get that off. So when you put this back together, what I would recommend is hold your assembly like this. 
and this little pin that goes through that's in my hand. I would put this part together off of the machine because when you drop this pin in, this one end is a little bit, a little, see how the shape is there, it's a little bit bigger. You want to put the thinner end in first so the bigger part is out and then it's going to drop through right here. See it's sticking out there so that when the shaft that comes through the machine casting pushes on this, this will push up on and release the tension on these pressure discs. I'm going to hold this just like this. These discs have, discs have to go a certain way. See how it's con, convex there? All right, let me... This is kind of fiddly, but drop that on. And there's a little cutout that's going to go over that pin. So this piece goes on first, just like that. I'll take the other one and put it the opposite way so that it makes like a channel here for your thread to go into, like that. Then the next part will be this, this next, next disc that goes on that's got that piece of metal through the middle there, that little bridge. Drop that on. And the purpose of that bridge is so that when this lever gets pushed, that disengages those two discs. The next part that go on will be this spring. And I'm going to have to put that on the table so I can compress that enough to get this thumb screw going. Okay, you can't see that, but you'll get the idea. All right, so it should look like this. Now, now you can see there is this cutout slot on this threaded rod that comes out, or screw, whatever you want to call it. If that gets compressed too much, because, you know, these are older machines, you don't know who's been uh, working on this, if they know exactly what was going on, you can spread that apart a little bit, but be careful so you don't break, break those off. I'll just run it in until it's like this. Okay, so now... When you, when you lift the take-up lever on your sewing machine, what's going to happen is it'll push on this and it should free, see how the spring moves away? It should free up the thread. So when you pull on your thread with the foot up, it's not bending your needle or you don't have to pull super hard to get it out of there. So that's this piece put together. Well, we have one more. I can put this on too. Okay, this is just the thread guide that's going to, it does have a part that sticks out here. That works in conjunction with the spring. Let me grab that. That's over here. That spring's going to sit on there just like that. Just like this. And then there you can see the little pin that sticks out the back. Okay, so I can go ahead and I'm not going to worry about the take up spring right now. I'm just going to put this, it's going to sit right on the front here. And then there's just one little screw that's going to hold that on. So this is kind of fiddly work, but if you're patient, you can have this by the time you would load your machine, take it to a, somebody to work on it and go back to pick it up. You can have do this on your own. Now you don't have to you don't want to get this super tight. All you want to do is snug it up so that this this will still move back and forth because this is considered well it'll move better when it's on that pin because this won't move, but you can move this back and forth to just how much your take up spring is moving. So I'm going to get back over to the machine and show you how to put this back on and then we'll just check it, see how it's working and what we have to do to make any adjustments to make it disengage and engage properly. Make sure you look into the casting of the machine to make sure this pin is in here. I actually bought a machine once. 
this wasn't working properly and this pin was gone. So I'm going to press on this with my little screwdriver here just to put pressure against it. And I'm going to lift the, the presser foot lever to bring the presser feet up. And see how that pin is pushing outward? That's what you want. Okay, let's continue. The next step will be to put the upper tension assembly back on the machine. So what I'm going to do is hold this in my right hand, this in my left hand, put the spring over like so, and I'm going to keep an eye on where that small registration pin is on the spring. And slowly work this on. And that should, spring should fall right back into place. And I'm going to just pick it up and set it right there, right on this where it rests on this casting. Okay, now hold this with one hand. Get this thumb screw back on. Sorry if I'm blocking things. Try to keep my finger out of the way. Now I'm just going to get this started because this will help me hold the, this in position up here. You can see a little movement there. The next thing will be the thread guide. Like so. And then this screw has to be put in. And this is where you're probably not going to see a thing because my hand is right in the way there. I can get it out of the way here. I'm just going to let that drop just so I can get this started. Just run this in. You can later on, you can move this wherever you want. I like to keep it at an angle, something like this, so then I can bring my thread in the top hole out the bottom and it's the thread has to run right over the top here. So I'm going to get this just snugged up for now. And then I'm going to just check this the, the, where this is this guide here with this little finger is set. Just so when my can change that a little bit. It just when this spring is working as you're sewing, this can just adjust it a little bit. So I just snug that up right there. I've got the upper tension assembly back on the machine, but since we're here, I'll just quickly mention what these two screws do that are in this casting. The far back one you can loosen up to turn this shaft if you need to tighten or loosen your spring right here. And the one closer to you, this one right here, you can loosen and tighten. Just to change, there's a little guide. You'll see it on the underside if you want this spring to be sit up higher or lower. This is a good angle where it is right now, so I'm not touching either of those. And let's just check. I'm just going to take the screwdriver here. I'm going to push on this. I'm going to tighten this a little bit more. Okay, the presser feet are in the down position. And you know what we should do? Let's just take, a, take some thread quick. And just, I'm just going to quickly put some thread in here. This is a pretty thin, this is a 69 thread. And I'm just going to run it over the top and then down the bottom. This is the way you would thread the machine. Okay, and I can tell now when I pull, tighten this up a little bit to give it a little pressure, I can tell there, there is resistance. So this is pushing against the thread the right way. And when I pick up, my presser foot it pulls through smoothly okay so it's working properly now and then when I set it back down that registration pin will go back in and I've got tension and if you need more tension you just turn this thumb screw in so let me show you from another angle how this all works I've taken the end cap off of the machine just so I can show you how the mechanism works here from this side. This is the lever that will raise your presser feet. And you can see this little part towards the back here in that gap moving. That is what's going to push that pin to disengage your upper tension discs. So when you, and then also watch over here, you'll see that move ever so slightly. The machine's wiggling a little bit because it's on the table, but, and that will open up those discs so you could pull your thread through. That should do it for this one guys. There are many machines that have this same design upper tension assembly. So hopefully this video was helpful and let's just take a look at the machine here. It's the 206RB-2 
industrial sewing machine. And uh, if you liked the video, if this helped you out, hit the thumbs up button, like and subscribe. I notice a lot of people do watch the videos just to get the help that they need at the moment. They may only watch for like two minutes, they figure out what's wrong. They just leave the video, they don't like, they don't subscribe. It really helps me out if you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and it inspires me to make more of these videos. They do slow me down on my repair process, but I don't mind making these videos. You know, they help other people out with their machines. I know there's a lack of industrial sewing machine repair people. They're just getting older, retiring, and a lot of the shops are shutting down. So let's keep the videos going. Like and subscribe. See you on the next one. See ya.